Praise the Lord, everyone. I welcome you all to this evening, um, Digging Deep. And I believe God that um, is going to speak to each and every one of us. Uh, I want us to start with an opening prayer. But before then, let me welcome Sham Shami and Aisha, Lida Sanchez and uh, others that are on the line. May God bless you. So unfortunately, I cannot get anybody on Facebook because I'm not on Facebook now. So Jesse, you will be on Facebook for us to find out who and who are on Facebook. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father and our God, we want to thank you once again for this great opportunity that you are giving to us. We give you all the praise. We give you all glory give you all honor and adoration. Thank you for your great mercy. Thank you for this day that you Glory. have made. Give you all honor and adoration. Presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing us your mercy. Thank you because I know you are good. You want to teach us and you are going to show us the way. Thank you, Father, because I know tonight your word will come out like fire and like a sword that will touch each and every one of us. At the end, we all will not go back home the same, but we will be touched with the word of God that will transform our life for good. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, Dicke Precious, good evening. I can see who is that. That's Dicke Precious. Dicke Precious is not, that is not Dicke Precious, that is J.D. Okay, okay. Gay is not aware that he is teaching. He's supposed to. Who is? Is that what he's saying? Oh, Gay. Yes, I'm sorry. I think I missed that uh, uh, that date. I'm very sorry, Daddy. Uh, no problem. I could. I. It's my fault. I'm supposed to have informed you. But anyway, I'm going to take something this evening. God bless you all. So uh, you're all welcome. JD from the world from Turkey, God bless you for joining us. Aisha, Sham Shami, Samantha, Sarah and Kana and Kana of the Kanas and the Stars, uh, Lida Sanchez of Jordan, Guy, Maya, um, all of you, you are welcome. Tonight we want to talk on, I'll just take a, a message on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. And I would like Sister Lida to please open her Bible to Philippians chapter 2. And you will read for us from verses uh, 1 to exactly 8 or to 11. Lida, are you there? Or oh, you are in the into? Lida, are you there? If you are not there, mommy, please, can you read it for us? Philippians chapter 2. Yes, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Chapter 2. Philippians 2. 1 to 11. God bless you. 1 to 11. Hmm. Verse 1 says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels or, and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Three, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let it steam other better than themselves. Look not every man. Where is it, mommy? Um, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in, in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Eight. And being found in fashion as men, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, 
even the death of the cross. Nine, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and give him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, today we want to talk about the mind of Christ. And uh, the question we always ask is, what is the mind of Christ? How do we uh, have the mind of Christ? When you look at Philippians chapter 2, Jesse, is my is the volume up now? Okay, so uh, when you look at Philippians chapter 1, which Sister Leader has just read, he said, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy. Now, when you get to verse um, 5, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now we are set to what is the mind that they are talking about because they want us to have the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ means that we have to be like Jesus. If we are actually truly the disciples of Christ, we need to have his mind and be like him. And so here he says in verse 6, who, who, that is Jesus, being in the form of God, that is humility, is God himself. He came down in the form of man, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. When you look at it, he said, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of, man, of men. Now, Jesus Christ himself is God, and uh, for because of us, because of our sins, because of the love he had for us, he decided to surrender himself to the ones he created so that he would deliver us. God created the world and made everything in them, gave us a garden, gave us good things. He prepared everything down for us the animals, everything, the leaves, the plants, the fruits. And after he has done that, he said, okay, man, you can now come and enjoy what I've prepared for you. And so when God prepared this for us, and uh, as we were trying to enjoy those things, the devil himself, who is always never happy for what God is doing for us, decided to find a way of making sure that he deceived man so that we will fall. And I want to let you know, in everything that we do in life, the devil can never get you except when you fall, except when you derail. And so the devil came in and decided to deceive man, and man fell. And so Jesus Christ, seeing that this kind of deliverance cannot come just by uh, ordinary sacrifice, it must come through the blood, he decided to surrender himself. He came down himself. Surrender himself to the man, to the, to the creature, to the people that he created so that he will be killed and be delivered. And Satan thought that he has won the battle. As we have always known, Jesus decided, he decided to lose the battle so that he can win the war. So, and he said, and being found in a fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the dead on the cross. Wherefore, because of the humility, because of the humility, God also highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every other name. What does that tell us? It tells us that as children of God, if we as his children will also humble ourselves, there are a lot of things we need to do. Some people may abuse you. Some people may uh, do a lot of things 
in, to, to, to disgrace you, but to, as long as you humble yourself, the Lord said he would lift you high. Many of us, where we are today, is not because of our struggles. It's not because we are um, educated, highly educated, but it's because of the humility you gave out, you, 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 you surrendered to Christ because of your humility. That is why you are where you are today. He so said, that is the name. He gave him a name that is above every other name. At the mention of the name of Jesus today, that God that came to die for us, Satan thought that he has won. But Jesus Christ surrendered himself. And today his name is above every other name. And at the mention of that name, we see people being healed. Like today, somebody just, before we started this, uh, this meeting, somebody just sent a message to me and said, can you imagine that my, I am healed just like that? Because we prayed yesterday for people during the intercessory prayer. We prayed for all those who were sick and we really prayed with all our heart. That intercessory prayer team, it's a team that people, are, they are the rapid response squad, which they have to be holy all the time. And immediately they prayed. I just received a message of testimony today. The person did not even know we we're praying, but because we mentioned him and God did it. And so you can see that the name of Jesus is a very powerful name. And like we have seen in, in, in prayer rain, testimonies coming from prayer rain, Many people who are not even who don't even know the pastor, who don't even know where the place that the prayer in is being uh, hosted is, they just keyed in into people's uh, testimony, and through the testimony of people, we see miracles happening just because of that name of Jesus, who humbled himself on the cross of Calvary for you and I. So. The good Lord has been so merciful and has been so faithful to us in times past. And his mercy and faithfulness has been visible since the beginning of this year that we entered in. We see a lot of things has happened ever since we entered 2020. What does it tell us? It tells us that a lot of things will still come to pass. It has been a year full of numerous challenges from 2020. But God has proved himself very, very faithful. So we have been sharing a lot of testimonies um, in prayer. And those of you who are not joining prayer, and I would advise you, please get the link and join because you will now see the power in the name of Jesus. Now, for being having the mind of Christ, when we begin to have the mind of Christ, what are the advantage, advantages we have? What do we benefit from having that mind of Christ. What do we need have to achieve? What are we going to achieve? Now, what you want me, Pastor, you want me to have the mind of Christ. So what am I going to achieve? People will rebuke me. People will do a lot of things. People will bullshit me. What am I going to achieve? Today is Bible study. Um, Guy, are you ready? Lead, are you ready? Sarah, yeah, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, Lola, are you ready? Abimbola, are you ready? SKM, are you ready? Saram Augusta, are you ready? Now, I want us from Facebook, from here, Jesse, get ready to get me answer from Facebook. What will we gain by having this mind of Christ? Praise the name of the Lord. Over to you, open to everyone. What are we going to gain by having this mind of Christ? I don't want anybody to be silent because it's a Bible study. It's a Bible study. Yes. Number one, Oluwa Fumi Lola Giwa says peace. Yes, that is great. You will have peace. The peace, can you explain to us how the kind of peace you are talking about? Peace when I have my food on the table. Peace when I have meat in my, uh, in my rice and stew. What kind of peace? Where will this peace come from? How do we get this peace? Praise the Lord. Yes. Peace from the Lord, both physical and spiritual. Yes. Physical and spiritual. How? I'm walking on the way. I have physical peace. Uh, I have a, I'm not sick uh, spiritually. So how? You must explain to us. 
Anybody? Yes? When well, I say peace, we want to know the kind of peace. Do we, can we have peace without trouble? Please unmute. It's a Bible study. Can you, uh, will everybody unmute and answer me? Can we have peace without, without trouble? Can there be peace without trouble? No, there can be peace without trouble. Good. That is uh, Abir, am I right? Yes, it's Abir. Oh, I can't, I can't miss that voice all the way from Iraq. Yes, we'll be forewarned against imminent uh, danger. Okay. Now, you're still not getting me. Okay, Abir says, yes, there cannot be peace without uh, trouble. So, what I'm looking for there is the peace we are talking about is the peace that passes all understanding. And when you talk about the peace that passes all understanding, it means the kind of peace that you will have when there is big trouble and you are having peace of mind and you are smiling. Sally Koppel said, charity. Yes, okay, good, thank you. And uh, God said, you will have the spirit of understanding and be victorious in our life when you will have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. Yes, that's fine. Good. When you have the mind of Christ. Thank you. Um, so, the advantage is that you will have all-round peace. That is number one thing, because Jesus Christ himself had peace. When Jesus was to be killed, when they were pursuing him, when they accused him, you can remember the time that they brought a woman and they said the woman has committed adultery, that they have to stone him. He was very silent. He didn't shake. He didn't shout on them. He didn't say, you, you stupid man. No, he calmed down and he was writing something on the floor. He calmed down. So there is peace when you have the mind of Christ. When you walk with Jesus Christ, you have peace. Let's look at Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 and 31. Mark 6, 30 and 31. He said, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, but what they had done and what they had taught. Now, 31 says, and he said unto them, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. So it is not easy for we to come apart to take spiritual stock to appreciate our God and uh, praise him. So when we say we want to have the mind of Christ, it means that we have to be like him in terms of performing miracles. Yes, somebody's hand is up. I think that is mommy. Yes, mommy, can you, we, your hand is up. Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to add up to what we have said so far. What am I going to achieve by having this mind of Christ? We said that the mind of Christ was actually to provide salvation for the sinful man or for the lost world and to also show compassion to the helpless. There is an echo there. I tell uh, Jesse to put Maybe his it's phone on. It's my phone. It's my phone. Lida, can you, can you lower your volume completely? Is that still echo? Yes. Okay, I should go off on my phone. Okay, let me go off. Praise the Lord. Let me leave on my phone so that we can. Okay. Is there a silly echo? Yeah. Okay, praise the Lord. So, since the mind of Christ was to provide salvation for sinful man and to help, so what am I going to achieve by having this mind of Christ? I should also be able to save God in humility, being zealous to also draw the lost world back to Christ by evangelism. And in this way, I also have to walk in total obedience to his will at all times. This is how I will achieve it. And then because I'm also fighting 
a battle that is already won, I will have this confidence that I'm always victorious. And because I know I'm always victorious through Christ that strengthens me, you know, I'm also able to have a, a mind of triumphing in every situation that I find myself in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I also know that I'll be able to discern spiritual truth at all times if I have the mind of Christ, you know. This is what I am at achieving at all times. Praise the Lord. Okay, thank you so much, Mommy. God bless you. I received a message from Sister Hannah Ushetti all the way from Philippines. And um, she says, if we have the mind of Christ, our heart must be at his best to God. Let your trials be just uh, joy. This is the secret of a true believer. Honestly speaking, yes, um, I think Hannah is in the position to tell us what it means to have that peace, to have that joy. Because that daughter of Zion, as I'm talking to you, she gave her life to Christ. She became so faithful, so strong. And um, uh, something happened that she found herself in prison. And then there in that place, she was joyful, she was happy, and she was still doing the, the work of evangelist inside where she was. And today she can, she, yes, she can say boldly that this is what it means to have the mind of Christ. And she also said, if we have the mind of Christ, we become like him. We love what he, he had loved. Praise the name of the Lord. We love what he loved. We hate what he hates. But if we continue to love what Jesus hates, we don't have the mind of Christ. D.K. Prejor says there are so many benefits in having the mind of Christ. One will experience God upliftment in his life. Yes, there will be promotion in your life. I tell you the truth. There are so many people who have been promoted today, like one of us here, who have been promoted from grass to grace. And today she's an evangelist in one of the Middle East countries, speaking to people, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. We know where she's coming from. When you, de- when you come out from where you were before and decided to serve God, have the mind of Christ, your life will be transformed. No matter, nobody can stop you. We are going to deal with it. And I, I, I can assure you. Praise the Lord. So you will see that you will be promoted, you will be lifted up, and God will definitely take you to a greater height. The mind of Christ is what each and every one of us should have. Now, Olua Fumi Lola Giwa Black, he says, having the mind of Christ makes, having the mind of Christ is the same as being indwelled by the Holy Spirit and both are attained through the faith at the moment of salvation, at the moment of salvation. She also said having the mind of Christ makes you your agenda greater than your personal satisfaction. Your agenda greater than your personal satisfaction. I will ask you a question on that. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, when you have the mind of Christ, there are a lot of things. Your personal agenda will be put aside. You will only work on God's personal agenda. That means your will will have to submit to the will of God because you have no control over your will anymore. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So the mind of Christ makes us to be like him. The mind of Christ can make us to even perform miracles. And like I'm talking to you now, by the power in the name of Jesus, as you are in that Middle East country, as you are in that place, wherever you are, the Lord will begin to empower you and promote you. You begin to heal the sick in that land in the name of Jesus. Abia, begin to get ready because the Lord is going to use you mightily. Because wherever there is light, wherever there is light, darkness must disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you look at, we, 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 we read the, the book of Philippians, uh, when we are talking of the mind of Christ, the book of Philippians is one of the 
letter of love, Paul the Apostle wrote to all Christians. This book was not written to unbelievers. It was for Christians. That is why he said, let this mind be in you. And one of Paul's ministries is to rejuvenate or to renew or revitalize the spiritual life of multitude of Christians is to change our life, is to activate, is to put us on the right path, is to remind us who we are, is to make sure that we key in into the plan of God as regards our life. So Paul actually wrote this episode to the Philippians and to us Christians today. One, why did he write this? to encourage us, to encourage all Christians. And I want to encourage you today. You may humble yourself as Christ. You may be doing the right thing. As long as you are doing the right thing, if in everything you are doing, people are congratulating you and are telling you you are doing well and are telling everything they say is good, good about you, check yourself, you are not good. If nobody is saying any bad thing against you or saying rubbish thing against you, then there's something wrong with you. They are not they are walking on the right path. Any true Christian, no matter who you are, you cannot be greater than your master. Jesus Christ himself has said this. Jesus Christ was healing the sick, was delivering those, was casting out demons. And they were saying he was using magic power. He was casting out demons in, using the name of Beelzebub. There is nothing you would do in this life. I, I love my people who said, he said there was, I always tell us this story about a, a man who was riding on a donkey and um, he carried his family and uh, the man carried his wife and his uh, his children and put them on top of the donkey and he was uh, just walking and then people he met the first set of people and they saw him and they said oh this man look at him these people are very wicked how can they allow this old man to be just walking like this and they themselves climb the donkey and enjoy them said they're supposed to allow the old man to sit on the donkey and enjoy himself okay the children came down the wife came down and the man climbed the donkey. Oh, no, no. And they were going. And as they were going, he met another set of people. They said, these people are so, so wicked. This man is so wicked. How can he allow this young and his wife, his precious wife, to be walking and he himself only is climbing the donkey? And okay, man said, okay, so that there will be no trouble. He decided all of them climbed the donkey and they were going so that nobody would complain. On the way, they met another set of people. Those people said, hey, these people are so wicked. They want to kill this donkey. Everybody climbing this donkey, can this donkey carry them? Oh, what kind of wicked people? They said a lot of things about them. Okay. They said, okay, so that we satisfy this. They all came down and they were walking side by side with the donkey. And they met another set of people. Ha! They met and said, these people, they, are, they don't have sense at all. Well, how can they be allowing donkey to be walking alone? And they can, instead of them to climb the donkey and enjoy themselves, they are walking side by side. What is the use of the donkey? In conclusion, the man said, there is nothing in this life you can do to satisfy any human being. So when you have the mind of Christ, get ready because you will not satisfy any human being. It's rather you obey God and satisfy God and let man not be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord. So Paul wrote this thing to encourage us because we will expect this kind of rubbish, people rubbishing you, for us to put Christ first in everything that we do in our life. So let Christ be number one. Praise the number one. Number two, to activate our spiritual antenna, to make sure that our spiritual antenna, the Holy Spirit, is with us. We, 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 we check what is right now in the world and go back. Spiritual antenna, you can only know your spiritual antenna when you go back to, your, to the scriptures and see what is happening in the world. Many people are confused. Many people are devastated. Many people are disturbed when they see trials coming. That is why we need to encourage each other. 
there is need for encouragement. Even your pastors, the ministers, don't think that they have arrived. No, they have not. They are human beings. They still carry flesh and blood. And so every one of us, we need encouragement. The word of God must always go out, always. There are people outside there who need our encouragement, especially like people who are missionaries in the field. Number three they, is to show Christ's example of humility. I'm talking about the book of Philippians that Paul wrote to us in the book of Philippians, is to show Christ's example of humility. Christ humbled himself with the increasing situations and, and the problems we are having all over the world. What kind of mind do we supposed to have as children of God? Problems like bills to pay? Yes, a lot of us. When we look at the year 2020, it was one of the worst years ever since in our generation, anyway, in our generation. Many people could not pay bills. You could not work. If you don't work, how can you pay your bills? So what kind of mind do we supposed to have in a situation where you cannot pay bills? When you, you have health threat, when food is running low in your house, no jobs, no money, political and social unrest, kidnapping, violence increasing all over the world, wars and rumors of wars. What kind of mind do you suppose to have? And that is why we should have the mind of Christ. Like Sister Lola said, you will have peace. That is the peace that passes all understanding. So the mind you exhibit now will tell you who you follow. And that is why we need to encourage one another with the word of God. The word of God is the only solution for us to be encouraged at this time. We must remember that we are not excluded or immune from the ills of the society in the present wicked world. As long as you are a child of God, as long as you are born again, get ready for battle. You must fight. And that battle is to make sure you win the war. Jesus Christ decided to lose the battle just for him to win that war. Because all what we want is what he was looking for is to make sure that he delivers us. But the devil did not know this. He said, except a corn of wheel for, which falls into the ground and die. It means like that. But if it dies, it will bring out many things. So that spirit of pride in your life must die. That spirit of selfishness must die. If you don't allow it to die, you cannot grow. You will remain like that. It will suppress you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we should know that we are in a battlefield right now. Yes, I can see someone there making a comment all the way from uh, Facebook. Marlene Aquino Sitlang. He said, if we have the mind of Christ, everything will be excellent, either in your future, as it is written in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And Jeremiah 29, verse 11, who can tell me what it says? Uh, lady, lady, who can tell me what it says? That he said he has planned for us. The plan he has for us, a plan of good and not of evil. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is Malin Siplang all the way from Facebook, she's making that comment. So this battle is not a physical battle, it is a spiritual battle. A spiritual battle, praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter four, chapter six, verse 12. Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, somebody read it for us. Can someone read Ephesians chapter six? It's Bible study, so I want everybody to participate. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Somebody read and explain to us what it means. I'm waiting for somebody to read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 and explain to us, children of God, are you there now? Read it for us. Who is going to read? It's the Spanish now that scared everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everybody kept quiet because I said they should explain. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. 
I read in a simpler this thing and I have it. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So that particular passage is what we read every time. We don't fight against this blood and flesh. We are fighting higher powers, the powers that rule in this dark world, the powers that have authority that is higher than normal eyes. This is what this verse is saying. These forces are evil and they are in heavenly places. Bible says high above or far above. God has made us to be far above them. And so in spite of us wrestling with this, we should know that we are fighting a battle from a victorious standpoint. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. God bless you. Is there any other person who wants to meet? Hey, yes, Sister Bimbola. Thank you, Daddy. Um, sorry, I just want to remove the echo. Mm. My understanding of that passage, um, in addition to what the mom said, is also that, um, Daddy, you mentioned something that when you have the mind of Christ and you want to do that which Christ will do in every situation, then you're prone to persecution. Uh, you cannot satisfy any human being. And because of that, the devil will use human beings around you to persecute you. You will use people that you don't that you least expect to get at you. What this means is we when those things happen to us, we should realize that we are not it those people are not the ones to fight because they are not the ones fighting us. It is the powers and principalities in high places that is at work in their lives and using them to get at us. So if we have this uh, uh, scripture at the back of our mind and we know that we are doing what Christ wants us to do, when we are, we are sure we have the mind of Christ in us, we will not allow whatever persecution that we face to get at us. Mm -hmm. We will realize that it is the devil that is at work and we will know how to, and we will know how to direct where to direct our prayers and who to attack. So I will always look at Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, who we'll look at, at the cross, who will not lose focus because we know that it is not these people around us that are, 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 are fighting us. It is the devil that is at work in our lives because the devil knows that God, we have a, great, a, be, a greater agenda. God has a bigger purpose for our lives. And he doesn't don't want us to achieve that. Therefore, he will keep using anybody around to get at us. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for that contribution. So our mindset has to change from today. Our mindset must change from today. Every one of us. So when you see people, you say you can use people you, you never expected. They will use the devil can use them to attack you. And we, we, we are not looking at those people. So our mindset has to change today. Like Jesus Christ himself said to Peter, when Peter was speaking, he said, Satan, get behind me. He was speaking to Satan, and when Peter was speaking, but because he knew that it was not Peter that was saying was speaking. So our mindset, my mindset has to change from today. When you see that kind of a thing happening and people you less expected attacking you, I think God will give us the spirit of humility to quickly say, you are not the one talking. A, you are not the one talking, singing. You are not the one talking every day. You are not the one talking. Know that the devil has entered. When you, you know, most of the time when you are doing deliverance, 
and you want to deliver somebody, you see the voice of the person will change. The, pe the person is talking. It's not the person speaking. May God bless us, bless Sister Abimbola for this uh, contribution to remind us because Pete, Paul here was not actually talking to unbelievers. He was talking to believers. He knew what we are going to pass through. Jesus Christ himself passed through it. And as such, we must change our mindset. Let our mindset be the mindset of Christ. Amen. Because we are fighting against powers of darkness we cannot see. Praise the name of the Lord. So all of us soul, as soldiers, I'm sure, is it the same hand or another one is going up or you see the same old one? Another one, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I just want to explain, shed a little light on uh, what Sister Lola typed when mm -hmm. he said that if you have the, when she said that when you have the mind of Christ, the, your, uh, the agenda, the God's agenda will always be greater than your personal, uh, your personal satisfaction. And I, I just, when you mentioned uh, about uh, Jesus and Peter, I also remembered when Jesus was tempted. Remember that after Jesus was baptized, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he went into the uh, um, wilderness to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Lo and behold, who came after 40 days and 40 nights? Devil. One would think that after you fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the person you will see is angel now. Okay. Angels will come and attend to you immediately because you've been in the presence of the Lord. You have prayed. You have consecrated yourself. So the devil should see you and run. Sam, Sam. The devil did not run. The devil came to the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one that left his glory in heaven. But because he came as human to the world, the devil had the audacity to come. And what did he come with? He flashed Jesus' uh, what would give Jesus personal satisfaction. That was what he flashed at him. First, he said, turn this bread, I mean, this stone to bread. He said, acknowledge the fact that you are hungry. Yes, mm. you are the king of kings. You are fasted this. You are hungry. Turn this bread, this stone to bread and eat. But Jesus was quick to let him realize that the agenda I have here is beyond my personal satisfaction. If we have the mind of Christ in us, we will always be able to put our personal satisfaction under and always carry on the, the Lord's agenda. The second thing, he took him to a high place. Say, fall down. He will send angels to come and carry you. He took him to the highest. He said, I will give you the whole kingdom. Flashing his personal need, his personal satisfaction, what to benefit him personally. That was what he kept flashing at him. But thank God for the spirit of God in Christ that rebuked him. So that the way we have the mind of Christ, it will the mind of Christ will help us to always place God's agenda above our personal satisfaction. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much for that contribution, and God bless you real good. So we 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 must our personal agenda must be put aside and look up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Okay, brother JD. Give you opportunity to say over to you. Your hands are up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, having the mind of God, another thing that I see there is this. Um, if we have the mind of God, we will be rooted in the scriptures. Because like Sister Abimbola just uh, said now, when the devil approached Jesus Christ, he knew what he wanted. And someone that just came out from a 40 days night and day uh, fasting, he knew that the, 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 the thing that the person needed is food and water. But there is something that Jesus Christ did there. He said, as it is written, for every of the uh, uh, temptation, he said, as it is written, as it was written, as it was written. So if we are rooted, Having the mind of, of, of God means we 
it will make us to be rooted in the word of God. So when the devil strikes or when the devil comes, we will always refer back to that word that I used to create heaven and earth, that as it was written, as it was written, and the devil will flee. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much. Yes, the word of God is our base. A word of God is our weapon that we can use to fight the devil. And I want to let us know here, um, you must take note. Anytime you finish fasting, get ready, no matter what, no matter what. For many years of my being a Christian, and I want to tell you this, uh, right from when I became a Christian newly, back back then in the northern part of Nigeria, I used to stay with my auntie. My auntie loved me. We love ourselves so much. I've never seen a woman, my, my, any of my relation love me like that. And I lost her some years ago. She can do anything for me. But you see, immediately when I finish fasting, she'll be the one to make sure that you offend me. We always quarrel. Something must come up. Like that's why it's exactly what's happening. The, 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 the one that will try you is the one that you never expected. And it was later on, that time I did not understand why, but it was later on when I became a strong Christian and studying the scripture. And now discover, okay, I cannot be greater than Jesus. He was tempted after the devil brought that food. Come and eat, jump. But humility. He did not say, okay, I, I'm going to show you, Satan. Some of us want to prove the devil. At times, when Jesus Christ himself, you see, he will escape. Wisdom. Praise the name of the Lord. So let us from today have the mind of Christ. Amen? So all soldiers, we are soldiers of Christ. As we have said, we fight against uh, uh, spiritual wickedness. All soldiers preparing for battle must make sure that they are with a proper, the proper, proper weapon, which is the word of God. You must also be trained on how to use that weapon, not just using it like that. You just go and be like the sons of skivers. When they know they, they know the word, they see the word, they started speaking the word, they commanded the, they command the devil with the word, but they themselves are not grounded in the word. They don't know who is who the word is. They just spoke and declare, Satan, come out in the name of Jesus. And the devil pounced on them. So you must be grounded in the word. You must know how to use that weapon. You don't just take AK-47 and begin to shoot. It, it will be pushing you backward and you can fall inside the pit because the power, the force of the bullet going out and pushing you back, you can somersault and the enemy will get you straight away. So how do we defend ourselves and prepare for battles against the enemy we cannot see? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Anybody there? Second Corinthians chapter 10, 4 and 5. Who is there to read for us? Second Corinthians 4. Second, Second Corinthians, Corinthians 10. 10, 4. Yes. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. For the weapon of our warfare are not kind of but mighty through God, God. the pulling out of the stronghold of the enemy. So we must know that our weapon are not carnal weapon. They are not physical weapons. They are not the people that you are seeing that you begin to attack them. May God help us to know the how to fight this battle in the name of Jesus. So another aspect of a soldier is that the, he must uh, know the enemy he is fighting with. You must know the enemy you are fighting with, not the human being like Sabine, but I have said today, it's not that human being you are seeing. Me, I've learned a lot today. And um, when anybody attacking you, even your, your children attacking you, just tell them you're not the one speaking. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So as we are here these few days, we are going to focus 
we are going to focus on how to cultivate the mind of Christ. So as we are here, we have only a few days, maybe a few years, maybe a few months. We don't know here on it because the time is far spent. The time is far gone. It's time to watch and pray. Brethren, let us cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of Christ. The time is fast spent. So we have to spend time to meditate on the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So I pray that after today, you will take this home that the people whom you see attacking you, speaking to you, giving bad words, saying bad things about you, fighting you, oh, you must give them, attack them back with love. Release your own weapon. Your own weapon is love. And that is the weapon Jesus used in conquering the devil on the cross of Calvary. And that is having the mind of Christ, love. When they say you are foolish, love, may, may God give us the grace to do this in the name of Jesus. When they come in one way, say, continue to show love. And God will help us to be able to do this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Any question or any contribution, please, question or contribution. We want to thank God today. Uh, we did not inform our brother Key. Uh, it's my fault. I supposed to have informed him that he's the one taken today. So at this few minutes, when I discovered that he was not aware, we have to take do what we are doing. I'm sure God wanted us to know this. So any question, Julie Lagare, Kana, do you have question? Seram. Augusta, do you have question? Sham Shami, do you have question? Aisha is out. Abiel, do you have question? Samantha, do you have question or contribution? Over to you, anyone? Um, yes, Abimbola Omodadi, you can go ahead. Thank you, Daddy. Um, this particular contribution might not be for anyone that is currently on the platform, either YouTube or Facebook or Zoom. It might be for people that will listen later. Just to encourage anyone out there that is still considering whether to come to Christ, to quickly take the decision and come to Christ. Daddy read a particular passage now that said the devil is roaring, is going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom to devour. Also, we should know that our Lord Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Lord, interceding for us and advocating for us. And we can only be part of, we can only enjoy the grace of intercession and the advocacy if we come under the canopy of Jesus Christ. So no delay, that is it. like Daddy already mentioned, the trumpet can sound at any time. Please come under this canopy and be blessed. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Come under the canopy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, I want to plead with you there on YouTube on Facebook, the time is now. We don't have any time. Christians, pastors, ministers, take note. Being a Christian does not mean that you are free from trouble. No, it is the beginning of battle. <laughs> Being a Christian means you, are, you have enrolled yourself into the army of God. You have put on the uniform, and you have when you, by you carrying the Bible means that you are carrying a weapon that you need to fight. So you are not an ordinary person; you are a, a soldier. So you must get ready for war. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Yes, G. Meyer. Thank you, Daddy, uh, and sorry again for forgetting the, the time. But I want to uh, bring a contribution on uh, when Peter uh, asked Jesus, oh, we have left everything and now we are following you. What will we gain? Hey, that was the question we started with. What do we gain when we have the mind of Christ? For me, I take it like Peter saying, yes, and Jesus said it clearly. I'm telling you the truth. Nobody will leave brother, sister, parents, or whatever, and follow me. And he will receive more uh, now in earth. But also, uh, this is the thing I wanted to say. He said, yes, in the, on the earth, but also uh, the eternal life. He added something uh, very important we discussed, we talked about here, with persecutions. So the battle is there. <clears throat> we have to wrestle, to, we have to, to fight. And thank God uh, he did not leave us just like that. How would, we how would we fight? He also showed us and told us the persecutions here, the fight here is a spiritual one. Do not expect it to be physical. You will be awaiting, awaiting, and you might even go and fight innocent people. <laughs> but it is <clears throat> spiritual. And uh, yes, that is what I wanted to say for sure. And Jesus, our Lord, said it clearly to Peter. If you take my mindset, you follow me, you leave your family, you will get a lot of things, hundreds and hundreds, but also with fights, with battles now uh, on the earth. But thank God, the eternal life that he promised us will also be our portion. That is what I wanted to add. Thank you so much. That is one of the things you will gain. Like I said, like I said, you will gain persecution. When you were on the devil's side, there was no persecution. You are a friend to the devil. Uh, anything, it, you will be telling lies. They will love you so much. The world will love you. You do bad things. You commit sin. The world will love you so much. But immediately you decamp. Oh, persecution come. That is what you gain. That is one of the things you gain. And don't forget that you gain eternal life. Stephen, when he was in the world, nobody touched him. But immediately... He started preaching the gospel. He was killed, stoned to death. But his death brought about the spread of the gospel. And it was the death of Stephen. While he was dying on the cross of Calvary, that he pleaded and said, Father, please forgive them. Even if I, that is a prayer, he prayed for Paul. And uh, that is why Paul, the apostles, apostle, was able to repent. Prayers are very, very powerful. Like J.D. said, all believers have the mind of Christ according to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 16. What does 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says? I'm going to read it to, for us to see. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. It says that, for who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things. For we have the mind of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. All believers should have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And that is why we are here. So why, what, why Paul wrote that particular scripture is to encourage us to continue. As long as you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the mind of Christ is there. So he's encouraging us to keep it up. Because there are times, even as we preach this gospel, when trouble comes, we tend to forget who we are. I want us, wherever you are right now, bow your heads and pray and ask God, please, I know I am now a Christian. I'm now born again. I am your child. I want to have that mind of Christ. I want to maintain it. I want to keep it. When trials come, Lord, give me the grace to overcome when temptation comes, begin to pray, begin to talk to God right now, wherever you are. 
talk to God, tell him, God, please have mercy and help me to be able to maintain that mind of Christ, to be able to live and stand firm in whatever I will pass through, it will surely come. There is nothing you can do about it, but ask God to give you the grace. The grace, Paul said, the grace is, God said to Paul, is the grace is sufficient for you. The grace is enough, it's stronger, strong for you to stand. Tell God to say, please, I need that grace to be able to stand. Let me not fall, no matter the trials I see, no matter what I pass through. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor and adoration. We lift your name high above every name. May your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty